So before we looked at the definitions of a difference curves and what exactly uh, or what properties do we need in order to be able to represent them on the graph. But if you have a multiple choice question on an exam, you could uh, you might need to say something about what exactly the preferences are of that particular individual. So remember now that each indifference curve is representing the value that one person would get from a combination of two goods, so X and Y, or any goods that you happen to uh, put in there. So what exactly are strong preferences? So what we're going to say is that one unit of one good is going to be essentially equal to uh, some number of the other good. So what exactly does that mean? Well, we're going to say here that a strong preference for y means that one unit of y is equal to many x. So that's to say, we, if we were to give up one unit of y, we would need uh, you know, many units of good x in order to leave us the same, uh, to give us the same value. So that's to say, units of y are particularly valuable for us. They're worth uh, many units of another good. On the right here, we've got a strong preference for x. So it's going to be just the opposite as the strong preference for y situation. So here, that's to say, one unit of good x is going to be equal to many units of good y. So in this case, if we were to give up one unit of good x, we would need 12 units of good y to leave us on the same utility curve. So how exactly does that work? Well, the strength of preferences here can be shown by how much of the other good you would have to give up. And that's true in both cases. So what exactly uh, does this mean? Well, we can say that the strength of preferences can be shown by the opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost here relates directly to how much of the other good we would have to give up in order to remain here on the same indifference curve.